Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Whether it's for yourself, your child, or anyone else you care about, peer co-mentoring is among the more potent and free ways to improve a life. In peer co-mentoring, two to eight people meet regularly in person or virtually, you know, by phone or Skype, to listen, ask questions, and offer advice. Usually the focus is on a problem a person is facing, but sometimes, especially after a relationship among the members has developed, it might simply be to report on something good, bad, or just interesting that's happened or is upcoming. I've initiated and been a participant for years now in a peer co-mentoring pair and in a group of eight. And this little talk is going to summarize what I've learned. First, let's talk ground rules. The following are the rules for both my peer co-mentoring pair and for my group of eight. First, the Vegas rule. What happens here stays here. Second, listen carefully. Easier said than done. Before giving advice, ask yourself if it's wiser to ask a question. Maybe it's to get more information about the problem, such as, you want to tell me what you've already tried or considered? Or it could be a question to try to get the solution to come from the person. For example, what would the wise person within you do or try? That's often more effective than giving advice because the person, having explained it, now may have come up with a solution and he or she is more likely to implement it because it was their idea. Also, the person knows him or herself better than you do, and so their idea may take more into consideration than your suggestion would have. If you're feeling judgmental about a person's idea or even about him or her overall, instead of expressing the judgment, try to come up with a question that would allow the person to self-assess. For example, as you think about it, what do you believe the chances are of that idea working? Or if it's a broader judgment about the person, you might ask, so as you look at what you've done and not done this year, what letter grade from A to F might you give yourself and why? <clears throat> the broader corollary of that, what I've just said, is to be, of course, at the risk of being corny, respectful. Of course, you can disagree, but usually do it tactfully, maybe with an inquisitive question rather than with a diminishing statement. For example, rather than blurt out your visceral reaction, that seems crazy, try to have the restraint to say, I'm having a hard time understanding why you do that. Can you help me out? Now, should the pair or group be selected to be similar to each other or different from each other? The argument for creating a relatively homogeneous group, for example, by age, sex, or career, is the increased likelihood of relating to and being able to offer good advice. That also facilitates bonding. Occasionally, though, those benefits are outweighed by those of heterogeneity. That's usually when individuals' thinking tends to be siloed and could benefit from unblinkered, fresh perspectives. For example, a researcher on the genetics of intelligence might feel that he or she has heard plenty from that small world of researchers and would benefit from inviting a broader range of neuroscientists and geneticists to the group. If no one has a problem to discuss or news to report in a given meeting, you might try one of these. You or the other group member or members could give a two-minute talk on what the person is interested in these days. Afterwards, the other person or persons can comment or ask a question. <clears throat> or ask a question to be answered by everyone or just by volunteers from the group. For example, what do you like most and least about yourself? Or when was your happiest and saddest moment? Or what are you most looking forward to and what are you most afraid of? Avoid questions that are more intellectual than personal, for example, about politics or sports, fashion, or entertainment. Those tend to distance rather than bring members closer together. <coughs> Let's talk a little bit about structure. Consider having the meetings be 30 to 60 minutes long, weekly, semi-weekly, or monthly. Longer than an hour tends to be too much of a time imposition. People don't like to sit for more than an hour. And meeting less frequently than monthly tends to dissipate the bond among the members, although after a while, the interval could extend even to quarterly. You could schedule meetings at a fixed time, for example, the first Monday of each month at 7 p.m. The main advantage of that is that it's easier to remember, 
but that comes at the cost of flexibility. I prefer to, at the end of each meeting, agree on the day and time of the next meeting. <coughs> In my peer co-mentoring pair, we meet by phone for a half hour every other week, whereas my peer co-mentoring group meets monthly at 7 p.m. on a weekday by teleconference, the specific date agreed to at the end of each meeting. The meetings begin with one to three minutes of unstructured small talk, both for bonding and to give just a bit of grace to someone who might be late. Then, <clears throat> in my pair, the peer mentor always goes first and presents a problem or he updates me on something. I then ask questions and or offer tactful suggestions. After roughly half the session, 15 minutes, we switch roles. And there are times that he doesn't need the whole 15 minutes, and so he cedes the floor early. The structure is the same in my eight-person group, except that it's an hour long. And I begin by asking, who would like to take the floor? And the person retains the floor until he or she decides to cede it by saying something like, thank you, now who would like to take the floor? So, whether it's middle school kids or retirees, high school dropouts or the heavily degreed, Peer mentoring offers the promise of problem solving, friendship, and networking connections, all customized to your needs and all for free. <clears throat> so might you want to start a peer co-mentoring pair or a peer co-mentoring group? Invite the person or persons you most respect and whom you think would do well in peer co-mentoring. In any case, I do thank you for watching. Feel free to give it a thumbs up or if needed, a thumbs down. Your comments, share, hit the share button, social media, subscribe to the channel. But in any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.